You know, I've always got friends giving me photos and asking me to restore things. I love to do it because Photoshop, well, it's in my blood. And I've seen this, the changes in Photoshop tools over the years. Of course, everyone uses the clone tool. You know, after five minutes of Photoshop, you got a third eye in someone's head and, you know, all those kinds of things. But when it comes to photo restoration, we need to get rid of dust and scratches and specks and smudges and, and sometimes rebuild whole pieces of photos. And, and it can be quite challenging. And like I said, we started with the clone tool. We have the spot healing brush, but with content aware fill, and the new spot healing brush that works with it, I'm freaked out because I'm going to be done in like a fifth of the time, even sooner. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go have a look. So here's the photo that was sent to me. I asked the person to scan it in RGB. It's really important. Although this is going to end up a black and white photo, I asked them to scan it in RGB at the highest resolution possible. 1200 pixels per inch and they sent me a BMP file. Okay, no problem. The first thing you'll notice about this is there isn't a lot of contrast in this photograph. It's kind of dull. But because we're working in RGB, there's some magic in there. This is not like CMYK. Watch what happens when we look at the different channels. Let's look at the red channel. Very, very weak, not worth looking at. Look at the green channel, again, very weak, but look at the blue channel. I didn't do anything. I just turned on one of the channels. If you don't know why this happens, don't worry, just fish around and find one of the right channels. This one happens to be a uh, blue channel. I'll select it, copy it, and when you make a new document inside Photoshop, something you might not know is whatever you happen to have in memory it makes the document the exact same size. So you can see 2,877 pixels by 4889 at 1200. And it's grayscale, no problem. I'm gonna click OK and I'll paste. At this point, I can close my original photo. I don't need that anymore. Look at the amount of clarity that I've gained in this photo just by picking the right channel. So make sure people are scanning this stuff in RGB. All right, let's look at some of the problems in this file. There's tons of dust, some major scratches, and a giant hair right here. I don't know, there was a cat on the scanner that day, but for some reason we've got a giant hair. Again, your first thought might be, oh, grab the clone tool, but the clone tool isn't very forgiving. Uh, it requires you to be smart. Instead, I'm just gonna sit back and let Photoshop do the work for me. Over here, we've got our spot healing brush tool. And in CS5, we added the ability to do content aware fill on the spot healing brush tool. So let's get rid of this spot over here. I click on it, it's gone. Okay, no big deal. We could probably do that with the clone tool. Oh, let's get rid of some of this stuff right in here. And some of that, and some of that, and some of that, and some of that. So you can basically just sit back and start just pointing and getting rid of this stuff. Now, when I get rid of this hair, the one thing I want to do is maybe get rid of some of the dots that are close to there because sometimes the spot healing brush tool will bring that dot back in. I'm just going to paint all the way along here. Let go and pretty good. Any little telltale signs, no problem. Come down in here and get rid of those. In spots like this, you might want to just peck at it a little bit. And again, for the people that are used to the clone tool, I'm not using my left hand to option or alt on Windows, click somewhere else and bring it in. There's a certain randomization that, that works really well with this. No problem, get rid of some of that, get rid of some of that. Uh, in the clone tool, you would probably be undoing when something doesn't work. If it doesn't immediately work, you undo. But in this example, just keep going. But this next part, this is what really freaked me out. Look at what we have here. Giant scratches that go from the back to the front right across this high contrast area. I'm just going to drag all the way down and paint right down this area here. Let go. Yeah, I know. I'll let you absorb that for a second. It's freaking me out. Content Aware Phil understands where that edge is, where the contrast is, where it needs to stop bringing the background and start bringing in the foreground. And we can do that with these pieces too, although I'll probably try to get rid of a couple of these little splotches in there. Same thing, I'm all the way down in here, do that, 
If it doesn't do it, just undo it. There's a little bit of telltale stuff. See how it's starting to get a little bit of this one in there? I'll just keep working on this. So the idea again, don't quickly run for your undo. Just keep painting away and you'll find these results will really work well. Just clicking and of course you could use the uh, clone tool if you wanted to. You could use a larger brush, soft brush, what have you. Uh, in this kind of an area, it's, it makes sense just to make your brush a little bit smaller and paint in some of these areas. One of the things that I found in here was that it does help the direction that you're painting inside here. Uh, we can actually introduce what looks like little ruffles inside there uh, and fix these areas. So some of it is still a little bit tedious inside here, but compared to having to go through and work with the clone tool, this is much easier. So that is using content aware fill with the spot healing brush and the final result, you know, looks like something like this. One last step to do. What if they wanted a sepia or a colored version of this file? No problem. Um, you convert this back into RGB, you go from grayscale to RGB. And at that point, it just looks like a grayscale RGB photo. And the easiest way to colorize this is to go to our adjustments and click on the hue saturation adjustment, colorize, and then we just move this slider around here. So we get a nice sepia tone. Make sure you don't put the saturation up too much. And there we have it, our completely retouched, re-imaged photograph, taking the old to new with brand new tools inside Photoshop CS5.